Für die EFDD Fraktion hat jetzt das die FDD Group Mr. Farage. Good morning. Good morning. Funny, isn't it? Funny, isn't it? Thank you very much for that. Herr very warm welcome. Herr Farage. Um, how things have Herr changed. Farage. Just a second, Mr. Farage. Ladies and gentlemen, one major quality of democracy is that you listen to those even if you don't share their opinion. Well, thank you, Mr. Schultz. Isn't it funny? You know, when I came here 17 years ago and I said that I wanted to lead a campaign to get Britain to leave the European Union, you all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? And the reason you're so upset, the reason you're so angry, has been perfectly clear from all the angry exchanges this morning. You, as a political project, are in denial. You're in denial that your currency is failing. You're in denial. Well, just, well, just look at the Mediterranean. No, no, no. As a, as a policy to impose poverty on Greece and the rest of the Mediterranean, you've done very well. And you're in denial over Mrs. Merkel, Mrs. Merkel's call last year for as many, any people as possible to cross the Mediterranean into the European Union has led to massive divisions between countries and within countries. But the biggest problem you've got and the reason, the main reason the United Kingdom voted the way that it did is you have, by stealth, by deception, without ever telling the truth to the British or the rest of the peoples of Europe, you have imposed upon them a political union. You've imposed upon them a political union. And when the people in 2005 in the Netherlands and France voted against that political union, when they rejected the constitution, you simply ignored them and brought the Lisbon Treaty in through the back door. What happened? What happened last Thursday was a remarkable result. It was indeed a seismic result, not just for British politics, for European politics, but perhaps even for global politics too. Because what the little people did, what the ordinary people did, what the people who, who have been oppressed over the last few years and seen their living standards go down, they rejected the multinationals. They rejected the merchant banks. They rejected big politics. And they said, Actually, we want our country back. We want our fishing waters back. We want our borders back. We want to be an independent, self-governing, normal nation. And that is what we have done, and that is what must happen. And in doing so, and in doing so we now offer a beacon of hope to Democrats across the rest of the European continent. I'll make one prediction this morning. The United Kingdom will not be the last member state to leave the European Union. So the question, the question is, what do we do next? Now, it is up to the British government to invoke Article 50. And I have to say that I don't think we should spend too long in doing it. I totally agree, uh, Mr Juncker, that the British, British people have voted. We need to make sure that it happens. But what I would like to see is a grown-up, and sensible attitude to how we negotiate a different relationship. Now, now I, know, I know that virtually none of you have ever done a proper job in your lives <laughs> or, worked, or worked in business or worked in trade or indeed ever created a job. But listen. Just listen. Herr Farage. Mr. Farage, just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I do understand that you're getting emotional, but you're acting like UKIP normally acts in this chamber, so please. 
Don't, don't imitate them. Mr. Farage, however, I would say one thing to you. The fact that you're claiming nobody has done uh, a decent job in their life, you can't really say that. I'm sorry. No, you're quite, uh, you're quite right, Mr. Schultz. UKIP used to protest against the establishment, and now the establishment protests against UKIP. So something has happened here. Let us listen to some simple, pragmatic economics. We, between us, between your countries and my country, we do an enormous amount of business in goods and services. That trade is mutually beneficial to both of us. That trade matters. If you were to decide to cut off your noses, to spite your faces, and to reject any idea of a sensible trade deal, the consequences would be far worse for you than it would be for us. And I. Even, even no deal is better for the United Kingdom than the current rotten deal that we've got. But if we were to move to a position where tariffs were reintroduced on products like motor cars, then hundreds of thousands of German workers would risk losing their jobs. So why don't we just be pragmatic, sensible, grown up, realistic, and let's cut between us Let's cut between us a sensible tariff-free deal and thereafter, and thereafter recognise that the United Kingdom will be your friend, that we will trade with you, we will cooperate with you, we will be your best friends in the world. But do that, do it sensibly, and allow us to go off and pursue our global ambitions and future. Thank you. On behalf of the ENF group, Ms. Le Pen. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, uh, dear colleagues. Why are you getting so het up? Look how beautiful history is when liberty s succeeds and the, weight, the will of the people can body things forth. The UK is leaving after the result of the referendum. This is perhaps the most important historic event in the continent since the fall of the Berlin Wall. It's a signal of liberty, of freedom sent out to the entire world. It's a cry of love of a people for their country. The British have chosen a route which it was thought was closed for all time, and you were some of those who believed it was closed, those who said, it's all irreversible. The European Union is irreversible. The British people have told you where to get off. This is a signal victory for democracy. It's a slap in the face to the European system, which was increasingly based on fear, on blackmail, and on lies. Now, I have, we have seen examples in this chamber, threats of apocalypse, the uh, stock exchange, well, the British, they saw through that and they decided in, um, sovereign, in their sovereignty, leaving you to your uh, bitterness and your ex ex feigned indignation. For decades, the European Union has been built on the back of ordinary people, France and the Netherlands with their um, uh, vote the Irish having to vote again after voting no to Lisbon. The Greeks have been forced to give up their referendum and accept more austerity, and that went, was forced down their throats. Uh, perpetual poverty was their fate. The European Union has, the UK has committed the heresy by breaking the chains, linking them to the European Union, and raised as a religion by its propagandists and apologists. Now, if you've been blind for decades, by implementing absurd policies which have brought disindustrialization, mass unemployment, and mass immigration. 
then it's difficult to come back down to reality with a bump and see what is actually happening. The propagandists for the European Union on the left or in the centre or at, to the right. Um, put away those sulky faces, put away those angry looks and rejoice in the free, the great emancipation of peoples. This, 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 this is the end to the, you, their uh, contribution to the European Union. Uh, economic patriotism, patriotism, that's a, a glowing future for the United Kingdom, and that should, be a, that should motivate all of us to build a better future. I can already hear urban myths and uh, false truths uh, being said in order to discourage or deter others from going down the same path or wishing to bury Brexit by pushing it off to the um, uh, Greek calends. That is not a democratic method. The European Union has decided and we must respect their will and that f period. And the f way ahead is simple. Either you persevere with your expensive bureaucratic Europe, with the crazy schemes of those who want even more uh, Europe at a time when ordinary people want less. And if you do go down that path, I can uh, I guarantee that this totalitarian organization will collapse. We have to um, look for cooperation between free peoples and sovereign nations. From my own country of France, I can I commit to going to pursuing the path of liberty, which is the only way to real grandeur, l l live free peoples, live uh, free United Kingdom, and vive la France. Thank you. And now a non-attached member, Ms. Dodds. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. The people of the United Kingdom have given their verdict and their decision cannot be rewritten. They have recognized that the EU's problems are not just imperfections and they have said, let us chart our own course. This referendum represents a victory for democracy. The outcome was not one that our outgoing Prime Minister had hoped for. Yet he should be praised for giving the British people their say. For years, the people of the United Kingdom have been trying to tell you of their frustrations and concerns about the European Union. You turned a deaf ear, but today you are listening. Now, though, is a time for cool heads. These institutions, despite what I have heard today, must resist the urge for the knee-jerk reaction. Our nation has not turned its back on Europe. We are not inward thinking. We have for a long time sought a new relationship with our European allies, a positive relationship based on self-governance, free trade and cooperation, one which makes our world more secure, more prosperous. That doesn't make us any less European and it doesn't make us any less optimistic. The United Kingdom not only has the strength of characters to succeed for ourselves, but also the inherent humanity to defend the freedoms of our neighbours. Let us look forward to a new era, one in which the European Union and the United Kingdom can work closely and calmly for the benefit of all our people. Thank you. Okay, um, colleagues, I'm afraid I'm going to be quite strict about speaking time. Next speaker, Mr. Jung. Thank you, President, ladies and gentlemen. During the course of this debate, I have learned something I actually knew before the debate took place, that you can't leave a nation up to its nationalists. You have to respect nations. You don't need to respect the nationalists. They're not patriots. They're anti-Europeans. They're not patriots at all. And I think we need to draw the lessons of what we've seen happening over the past week. Um, we mustn't confuse different things. We shouldn't give the impression that Europe is a Europe of austerity. All the governments including those who throughout history 
have been pushing environmental policies have pursued the same policy. So I don't accept that the Commission can be described as an austerity commission. That is not factually correct. Uh, I know the Greens and the ecologists in government. Once you're in in opposition, you're very strong. As soon as you're in power, you do like everybody else does when they're in power. So don't point the finger at us. The UK didn't vote on austerity policies. It didn't vote on the insufficient protection of external borders. The UK is not a member state of the euro. So the euro policies don't apply to the UK. The UK isn't part of the Schengen area. So the United Kingdom is uh, master of its own border. So let's not invent anything. Because Mr. Farage, that is telling us stories. You told us a few days ago that you made a mistake on the budgetary aspects of what was at stake in uh, the relationship between the EU and the UK. If you said that, if you'd said that before the vote, then uh, I wouldn't need to congratulate you, but you lied. You didn't tell the truth. You fabricated reality. I enjoy debating with you, sparring with you, Mr. Farage. I think we share a similar sense of humor. You used to have a sense of humor. I still do, I think. But I find it regrettable that this is going to be the last occasion that we'll be able to debate because you won't be coming back. Thanks very much. On behalf of the Council of Mrs. Hennis Plaschon. Thank you, Mr. President, let me um, repeat. We have no choice but to respect the outcome of this referendum, a referendum that should serve as a wake-up call to all of us. At this point in time, the answer is not necessarily more or less Europe. It is about a better Europe. It's about a convincing Europe. The Union of 27 will continue if the UK decides to leave. But it is clear that we'll have to act. Our Union can only exist if it is supported by the millions and millions of citizens it is supposed to serve and to protect. And that support cannot be taken for granted. So we need to work day and night to earn it. As I just said, the outcome of the UK referendum does not mean that the threats and challenges we commonly face have suddenly disappeared. Neither does it mean that each nation will be better off acting on its own rather than as part of a collective on the contrary. In fact, geopolitical developments underscore the need for unity. No country on the face of the earth can meet all the threats and challenges alone. To this end, Council and Parliament will have to work constructively in tackling the big issues that European citizens require the EU to act upon. And as a new reality of 27 member states EU looms, this should not divert us from concentrating on what the EU can do to meet today's main challenges, such as ensuring the security of our citizens, deal with migration and refugee flows, boost the European economy by creating jobs for European citizens. So let us make sure that we maintain our friendship in a world that is rapidly becoming rougher and more complex. We cannot afford to be driven apart. We share global interests. So let us rediscover the simple notion that in this world, our interests are converging rather than diverging. If anyone is fatigued by continued cooperation, let this be your wake-up call. Mr. President, as always, Council stands ready to work with Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hennis Plaskart. Now we have a series of uh, speakers. First of all, Ms. Dodds, a non-attached member. Ms. Dodds. Thank you, Mr. President. I have listened very carefully to the tone of this debate, and I do accept that emotions are running high this morning. But at times, it has reinforced all the stereotypes that the British people fear about Europe, and which they voted against on the 23rd of June. Threats, bullying, and hectoring will not work with the British people. 
What we need to do now is accept the result of the referendum and build a relationship that is mutually beneficial to all our people, a relationship which respects our decisions but which helps us build prosperous economies, protect fundamental rights and secure peace in a world that is becoming increasingly dangerous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Juncker. Herr Präsident, ich möchte nicht, uh, Mr. President, I have to apologize to Parliament. I must leave you. Mr. Timmermans will uh, be happy to stay here. For I have a meeting with the British PM, British Prime Minister. As I'm respecting the British democracy, I have to go. Thank you, Herr Juncker.